Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, I got a comment on a video this morning, and I did post a brief uh, reply. But uh, the more I thought about it, I thought that I should expound further uh, and make a short video answer. Um, the, the comment came from uh, Jesus versus the world. <clears throat> and it goes, um, Brother Luke, with all due respect, hell is not a non-essential issue. The Bible is very clear. Discernment does not mean all opinions are equally valid. Sometimes it is obvious error and not just differing viewpoints. I am H-O, in my humble opinion. God bless you. Uh, well, first, let me just read my brief uh, answer. Uh, I wrote back, uh, yes, your opinion is, quote, <laughs> obvious error, unquote. Uh, but I will not hold that against you. I am curious, though. Would you mind listing for us all your, quote, essentials, unquote? <clears throat> we, as a group, agree that there are only three, and they are listed on my video description box. Uh, you have now added a fourth. None of us will conform to your demand that eternal torment in hell is an essential for salvation and or for fellowship. So, um, the point that was made is that uh, um, in this case, the subject of eternal torment in hell, but it could very well be, you know, five or 10 or 20 uh, other subjects uh, as well, that any person can bring up a, a subject and say, this also is an essential. Um, and uh, and I say, and uh, all the elders of the Church of the Eternally Secure have said and agree that uh, no, eternal torment in hell uh, is not an essential. Uh, there are are only three essentials that we have agreed upon that are truly essential. So, but we, we're all throwing this word around essential. So let's, let's at least define it. Uh, what does the dictionary say essential means actually? It says, um, a thing that is absolutely necessary. Uh, synonyms are, uh, prerequisite, requisite, requirement, need, condition, precondition, specification, stipulation, qualification, desideratum, sine qua non, a must. Um, so uh, it, it, essential is, is pretty much what most people would think it is. It's something that uh, you cannot uh, uh, go without. It, it, it is a requirement and there can be no compromise uh, when it when it comes to something being an essential. If it's an essential, you cannot compromise on it. Now, in the uh, in my experience, I found that for many years preaching uh, um, in the conventional ways uh, to friends and family and then to the public and as a street preacher, and then finally, about 10 years ago, at the beginning of this YouTube ministry, uh, I encountered a, a recurring problem. And uh, that is that uh, people were, were dividing over what I thought were um, minor doctrines. Minor doctrine would be another word, another term we could use in place of essential or not essential. Um, Doctrines or theological subjects or theological questions 
that do not rise to the level of importance uh, uh, to be classified as essential or a must or something that uh, we cannot compromise and allow other opinions. Uh, we, we must be dogmatic and rigid and intolerant of other opinions in, in, in when it comes to essentials. If something truly isn't essential, that means you cannot tolerate the teaching uh, anything contrary to it. You will not tolerate it. And uh, I uh, sought to, in my own mind and studies to try to figure out what really is essential and what is not essential. And uh, a few years back, I, I started putting forth the idea that there are three essentials. And, and uh, it's, uh, as I uh, was taught that over and over again in my videos. Uh, I found that some people were saying, yeah, see, I think you're absolutely right on this. I agree. These are the three essentials. Uh, Brother Bill uh, uh, joined me in this uh, a few years ago, and, and uh, he also adopted the idea that there are three essentials. We cannot compromise. We will not tolerate uh, uh, contrary teaching on these three things. And uh, apart from that, everything else is not essential, and uh, we we should be uh, allow diverse opinions on those things. Uh, and then uh, a few months ago, uh, I got to know our brother Matthias from Talking Doctrine, and he was particularly interested in my views on this, and asked if uh, we could talk more about uh, this idea of unity, liberty, and charity that I was promoting. Because it turns out that he had come to the same conclusion, and that he uh, uh, he had adopted this uh, as I had, kind of as a creed, as as a, as a way, uh, a philosophy to uh, employ, and so we have the uh, the slogan, unity, liberty, and charity. And, I, and kind of as our, our creed that we we want to not only live by in, in our own apply it in our own lives in our own interactions with people but we we want everybody else to adopt this as, as their creed and so what is unity liberty and charity well i'll talk about it for a moment here but many people who watch my videos uh also uh, you you participate on sundays in the live church broadcast, uh, Church of the Eternally Secure. Um, uh, and and since we started that, uh, now there's a website for the church, uh, house2housechurch.com, uh, I believe is the website address. And, uh, and uh, many people, we've encouraged you to, to join that website and be a member of the church, participate on the website. So, but if you look at the website, you'll you'll see. I hope you would take some time to actually study what the website in the Church of the Eternally Secure stands for. Uh, at the top of the website, it says guidelines, ULC, statement of faith, salvation, fellowship, partner channels. Um, but if you were to read, what are the guidelines for the church? What is unity, liberty, and charity? What, what does that mean? What is the statement of faith? What do we uh, all agree upon in, in, our, in the statement of faith? Uh, what is the means of salvation? What, how can we have fellowship? Uh, well, there's only one way. You have to um, unite around the core doctrines and, and uh, give liberty to each other and freedom on all the non-essentials. That's the idea. If you don't do that, you'll find that you can't have any fellowship because every time there's a disagreement, people are raising uh, all these minor doctrines to the status of a, an essential. And if you don't agree with them, then you're, uh, you're uh, disfellowshipped. Now, we will certainly disfellowship someone on certain grounds. If someone uh, teaches contrary to the core doctrines, you cannot be in this fellowship because that's what Christianity is. It's Christianity is based upon these core doctrines. Uh, and also, if you will, are intolerant of other people's uh, views uh, on the non-essentials, 
then you can't have fellowship because you're not willing to give liberty and freedom to others and you're you're elevating other things to uh, an essential status. And that's what's happened here in this particular comment. Uh, so uh, let me get back to that now. Uh, let's look at the comment more carefully. Uh, what, Brother Luke, with all due respect, hell is not a non-essential issue. Uh, well, we, we say the essentials uh, are that uh, Jesus Christ is eternal God Almighty. Uh, Jesus is not a created being. Jesus is eternal. He has no beginning, no ending. Um, he's the creator of all things. And if a person believes that Jesus is merely a prophet, or he, he is uh, some kind of an angelic being that was created by God, or, or anything other than eternal God Almighty, then uh, we, we will not tolerate uh, that kind of teaching. You must agree that Jesus is eternal God Almighty, God manifest in the flesh. Uh, another essential is that salvation is not earned through our own efforts, through any religious works on our part. Salvation and eternal life is received as a free gift from Jesus Christ. Uh, and the means of that salvation was accomplished by Jesus dying on a cross to pay for all our sins. So sin is not an obstacle between God and man anymore. And Jesus' bodily resurrection is the sign or the proof that Jesus offered us so that we can have confidence that his, uh, his claims are true. He is God. He is the Savior. He is the sole source of life. Um, so uh, it's, salvation is a free gift by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. That's the second fundamental or essential. And the final one is that uh, eternal security of the believer is, is a fact. That uh, once a person has received this free gift of salvation, uh, they, they, they were spiritually reborn, they were regenerated, their, their spirit was brought to life as a child of God, and that can never be reversed or undone. You cannot be unborn. So the eternal security of the believer is a fact. And if anybody believes that you can lose your salvation for any reason, then, uh, then they, they cannot participate in this fellowship because they're, they're teaching contrary to this core doctrine. So those are the three core doctrines, the three essentials that uh, I believe are essentials. And Brother Bill has accepted and adopted that these are the essentials. Brother Matthias agrees. Brother Daniel agrees. Uh, Sister Renee agrees, uh, Brother Nori agrees, and uh, anybody who has joined the Church of the Eternally Secure website, if you have read the Statement of Faith, if you read the guidelines, if you've read the article about fellowship, you would understand all this already, and this one should not be an issue. But if you're participating in the Church of the Eternally Secure under false pretenses, and you, you believe that there are more essentials than these three, whether it's eternal security, or whether it's a pre trib rapture, or it's reading from a particular Bible translation, or any number of other things. If you are want to have a fourth and a fifth and a sixth uh, uh, essential doctrine, the, when, you say, when you make it essential, you mean that you're dogmatic and you will not tolerate other opinions on this, uh, and, and that uh, um, so we are dogmatists and rigid and intolerant of uh, other other teaching contrary to the, these three core doctrines, but we also insist that everybody in the church should be eternally secure. You must accept it that the principle that we will give liberty, we will give freedom to all those who uh, have varying opinions on all the non-essential doctrines, and they're not elevating a non-essential to as, as an essential. Uh, 
you you must accept that we will not tolerate intolerance in this case um, in other words um, we we insist that you do do not uh, um, um, have bring dogmatism into the, this community uh, and that's what is happening right here this is uh, dogmatism about eternal torment now if everybody watched this last Sunday's broadcast we talked about well, what are some of the non-essentials and we, we, we would bring them up one at a time we'd all express our a viewpoint and what you should have learned from that the whole point of that exercise was to demonstrate to everybody that um, even among us uh, who are uh, what I call the elders of this Church of the Eternal Secure, uh, on the non-essentials, there's a, a wide range of opinions on all these things. And if we stick to this subject, eternal torment of, of the lost, um, um, I, uh, I I don't hold to eternal torment. Uh, Sister Renee says that she leans towards annihilationism. Uh, Brother Matthias says that he believes in annihilation uh, after the Great White Throne Judgment. The second death of the Lake of Fire is annihilationism. Uh, uh, Brother Daniel is the only one that expressed that uh, he he's still holding to the uh, eternal torment view. But the point I wanted to make by that was if you ask people about eternal torment or all these other subjects, if you will inquire, you will find out that the church is not some monolithic thing that everybody is like mindlessly just agreeing to point after point after point. We're all in have unanimity. No, we all have a wide range of opinions on all these subjects. So the question always is, what would you do when you meet someone who disagrees with you on eternal torment or something else? Uh, well, if you're going to respond like this, uh, basically lecturing me, uh, Brother Luke, with all due respect, hell is, a non, is not a non-essential issue. The Bible is very clear. Well, sister, you're wrong. The Bible is not clear clear at expressing that eternal torment in hell is an essential issue. Nowhere in the Bible does it say the doctrine of eternal torment in hell is an essential issue. There is no verse that states that. So don't tell us the Bible is very clear on this. And even in the teaching of eternal torment, there's only a couple of verses people can use to support it. And there's probably 50 or 100 verses we can use to refute it. But you probably don't know that because you haven't taken time and been respectful enough to, to others to study their, their opinion, to study this contrary viewpoint. Because if you had, you'd realize that uh, the Bible does not support your, your position here. Discernment does not mean all opinions are equally valid. No, not all opinions are equally valid, but all opinions are equally validly expressed. In other words, everybody has an equal chance to express their opinions on non-essentials. I've heard, matter of fact, when it comes to eternal torment, I'm not going to mention everybody's names, but I've talked to a lot of people over the years about it, and almost everybody I've talked to has their own unique explanation about eternal torment and hell and you know the, the the eternal state of the dead. Almost nobody I meet believes in or in eternal torment that the lost will be burned forever and ever. God is going to cause them to suffer and be burned forever and ever and ever. Oh, they all come up with some kind of a symbolic answer or uh, you know, philosophical way of expressing it or they, uh, uh, they can't be in the presence of God because uh, they rejected God so they could be separated from God in outer darkness. In other words, 
everybody is trying to find some way of uh, understanding and teaching uh, what is the state of the, the dead other than God is eternally tormenting, torturing people with fire. Most people don't believe that anymore because as, as we've studied the, the scriptures, we found that there's too many verses that say uh, that's not correct. Um, and then finally, she says, sometimes it is obvious error and not just differing viewpoints. Yes, sister, your opinion that eternal torment in hell is correct, that's an obvious error. You're obviously wrong. But am I sending you comments and, and uh, uh, to correct you on that? No, I just accept the fact that you're wrong and, and it's okay with me. You don't have to agree with me. I'm not, I'm not contacting you and lecturing you because you're holding to this horrible view of uh, God's torturing people forever and ever. Um, uh, so uh, when you say in IMHO, in my humble opinion, that's not the way you express a humble opinion. This is a, this is the way you express an arrogant, uh, dogmatic opinion because you're declaring that this hell, eternal torment hell is, is not a non-essential. That's a declaration. The Bible is very clear on this. No. Uh, so it's, you're not, you're not expressing your view humbly. If you, ha if you express it humbly, you'd say, well, brother, I, I think that, uh, you're wrong on this and, and, uh, I am, I think that this is the, the eternal torment is the correct view. Uh, maybe we'll never agree on this. Maybe you're right and I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right and you're wrong. I don't know for sure. Because the truth is, none of us really know for sure about this. And there's tons of different opinions on this particular subject. Um, but then I, in my answer, in my text answer, I asked... Uh, I'm curious, would you mind listing it for us all your essentials? So in other words, Jesus versus the world says that that uh, this hell, eternal torment and hell, so it's not the question is not is is there such a thing as hell? Well yeah, we have, we agree there is such a thing as hell. We also agree that there's such a thing as the lake of fire and the second death. Uh, but the, the the problem is uh the concept of eternal torment. Uh, that, that's the question. Uh, but Jesus versus the world is declaring to me and everyone that, uh, no, the three core doctrines are not enough. There's at least one more, and it's eternal torment and hell. Uh, I wonder if there's any more. Are there any other doctrines that we consider to be minor and non-essential? that you are going to elevate as, as essentials. And, and because it's an essential, there is no room for disagreement because, because essential means that uh, it's a must. You must agree with this. So really the, the, the subject of this video is not intended to be, is eternal torment correct or incorrect? The subject of this video is that if you, if you want to participate in the Church of the Eternally Secure, uh, it's based on the principle that we agree that there are three essential doctrines and that all other doctrines outside of those three are minor in comparison and they are not required to be, uh, agreement is not required. Um, so this ULC principle, the creed, unity, liberty, and charity, state, stated this way. Uh, in essentials, unity. Yes, let's unify around the three core doctrines. Not only should we, but we, we must. We must. You must agree that these three core doctrines are correct. Uh, and then uh, 
in non-essentials, that means all the theological subjects, doctrines, and questions apart from the three core doctrines, all of the others do not are not raised to the level of importance that we are we must insist upon agreement. Instead, we offer liberty to everyone. Everybody's free to have uh, varying opinions. Even some crazy opinions I hear. I hear a lot of crazy opinions about everything, but I don't write in letters, uh, you know, uh, lecturing them over. I just accept it. Hey, that's a weird idea. I think they're wrong. Maybe we can talk more about it. <laughs> um, and then the final is under unity, liberty, and charity is charity. Charity means love. Um, love, under love, we say kindness, respect, courtesy. All these things are part of being loving to, towards each other. This is the attitude that we must have in discussing all things. So the final part is of the creed is in all things, charity. In all of our conversations, let's be respectful, kind, uh, uh, charitable towards each other. Um, all right. Um, I look forward to your, your thought, everybody's thoughts on this. But as I said, if you want to talk about eternal torment is true or false, uh, that's not what the, this video is intended to be about. Uh, if you do want to talk about that, I would ask you, I would expect you to go to my playlist, What is the State of the Dead? Watch all those videos, learn another viewpoint, and you'll learn that the Bible does not support eternal torment in hell. It supports conditional immortality and the annihilation, uh, the total destruction uh, of the person in, in the, the lake of fire, which is called the second death. Uh, so I'm not really looking for comments about whether eternal torment is true or false here. What I'm looking for is comments telling me you understand that the three core doctrines, we're not going to elevate eternal torment or anything else as a fourth core doctrine. If, if you were going to insist that there are more essentials than these three, then I suggest you find or start an organization based upon that. Because that belief that uh, there's more than three core doctrines and that you must agree with me on eternal torment or else. Or else what? Well, we're talking about fellowship. Uh, if, if a person starts being dogmatic, saying that uh, eternal torment or a Bible translation or uh, uh, pre-trade rapture or anything else is required, you must agree with them, then you cannot, you cannot be in this fellowship because we have to be willing to uh, let everybody express all their varying views on all these uh, minor doctrines. Okay, I intended this video to be three or four minutes. <laughs> I got a little carried away. Thank you for watching. I look forward to your comments. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.